Ivan, it's Fustra. Um, true external monitor support is really here now on iPad OS 16, and I'm just so excited about it. This is one feature that I really wanted because not only does it allow me to just dock my easy to bring 11 inch iPad Pro and then use my monitor as a larger screen, it also gives me the possibility to use both at the same time, run multiple apps at once, increasing productivity without having to swipe between apps all the time. I've been enjoying the new features for a while now and in this video I'll be showing you how everything works, what hardware I use, how I connect everything and which additional display settings I found. Now before we start, it's important to mention that iPadOS 16 is currently still in beta at time of recording, so there might be still some features or changes coming in the future. If there are any, I'll still mention them in future videos, and also when iPadOS 16 gets released to the public in the fall. Feel free to subscribe to stay up to date. Okay, let's get started. So what type of iPad do you need? Well, Apple announced that these features I'm gonna mention today are M1 exclusive features. So it means that you need to have an iPad, with an M1 chip, so that means an iPad Pro 2021 or an iPad Air 2022. This also means that iPads, iPad Pro and iPad Air with an A chip won't be getting these features. So personally I had a 2018 iPad Pro, that iPad will be getting iPad OS 16, but won't be getting these features that I'm gonna to mention today. So what I did was I upgraded. This here is a 2021 iPad Pro with M1, and for me, this feature, these, all these features I'm going to mention today are very important features. That's why I found it worth the upgrade. Next, you will need to have a monitor. So this here is my Lenovo monitor, for example, and also a dongle to connect my monitor to my iPad. So this here is, an, is a dongle that I connect with an HDMI port and then it converts it to USB-C. And finally, you also have to have a way to interact with your screen, which means a trackpad or a mouse. So let me just show you here, this here is my magic keyboard, which I absolutely love, which also has a trackpad over here. And I can just interact between my screen. And if I just go down over here, I can just go to my iPad. That's how easy it works. But if I remove my iPad from my, extra, from my keyboard, then as you can see right now, it switches to mirror mode, okay? Because there's no way of me now yeah, controlling anything there if ever this was extended. Now I can also decide to put my iPad flat, for example, not use my trackpad and use a simple mouse with a dongle that I need to put in here. Let me just show you over here. I want to do that. It recognizes that there's a mouse connected and now I can just use my mouse and interact with both my iPad as well as my external monitor, just like this. So you don't necessarily need to have a magic keyboard for this extended monitor support to work. Now, when connecting your iPad to an external monitor, you get a few additional settings in the settings apps. So let me just show you here, settings. If you scroll down, you'll notice under display and brightness, they have three new uh, menus over here. Built-in retina display, my monitor name, and then arrangement. So if you tap here on your built-in retina display that's a display of your ipad so you can turn on two tone if you want you can change the brightness just like before but this here is something new this is something i also really wanted for a while now display zoom and this is basically changing the display scaling of your ipad and even the resolution of your ipad so if you tap here on display zoom currently we have standard space this is the the normal size of your of, of text of icons of everything even of menus and if you now switch to more space, let me just show you here and show you the difference. That's the difference. So everything becomes smaller, your text becomes smaller, your menu over here, the battery percentage, everything becomes ever so slightly smaller, which does actually make a big difference. So for me, I have a feeling now that my iPad, it's just an 11 inch iPad, I have a feeling that I can fit more now on my iPad. So it's up to you if you wanna turn it on or off and um, you can just do it here in the display settings. Personally, I just love to keep it on. If you go back here to displays, you can tap here on your own display and see which settings you have, these ones that I have right now. And But what's more important right now is arrangements. And the purpose of this is you can just change the arrangement of your iPad. So for example, right now, I just showed you, if I move my cursor up and I keep on going up, it will eventually just appear here on my display, as you can see right now at the top of your screen. So over here, it's now there. If you go back down, I can move down. And I think that's the most logical solution for me because I'll have to put my iPad here while I'm using my monitor behind my iPad. But if in case, let's say at work, that's the case, if I would move this to the side and have my, my monitor over there, I can just move iPad to the left side, set, 
And now if I move up, nothing happens, just notification center will appear. Instead, if I move to the right, so let me just, just imagine your iPad is like this on the, on the right or left side, and I can just move my cursor away through that area, and now it's on my screen. I can move it back over here to my iPad. And that's just very useful, very cool that they thought of it. They can change the arrangement of your iPad. Now, if needed, you can still turn on mirror display, which is something that I personally do at work. I have to do a lot of presentations and I have to mirror my iPad on my projector. So I have to really turn it on all the time. Okay, now those are all the technical parts. Now let's get to the practical side. How do we actually use these features? Now, it's very important to note that there's a dock on the iPad, but also on the external monitor. This is just so cool that they still added this, and this dock is exactly the same as the one on your iPad, which means they can just use your external monitor just the way you expect it to work, uh, which also includes here the app library. It's all just there, and you can just really put your iPad on the side, dim the screen a bit, and then use your monitor as a main device. Maybe use your iPad as a way to play music or to keep an eye on social media while you're doing actual stuff, actual work stuff on your screen. Now, let's open Word, for example, like this. And so Word now opens in a sort of window. Window mode, or as they call it, stage manager, is a way of freely moving around windows, resizing them, and so on. Now, if you want, you can turn it on or off, like with a toggle over here, this now it's currently turned on. You can also turn it off and use everything the way you wanted before, or the way it works on um, older iPads. But if you turn this on, then Stage Manager is here. Now, let's say you're working on a Word document in the train, and when you got home or you got at work, you would like to move this window now to your external monitor and continue working there. Well, you have these three dots like you know from before, and you have now five options. You can zoom to make it full screen, or you can tap again to make it the way it was. You can add another window, you can minimize the app, you can move it to display or close it. So what we need now is just to move it to my external monitor. So we tap over here, and now as you can see, it moved to my external monitor. I can do the same thing in the opposite direction. So I can tap here, move to display, and now it will move back to my iPad. Now to resize floating windows, just grab the sides here on the right side at the bottom or in the, in the corner, you can just grab them over here, and then you can uh, resize your apps just like this. If you're not connected to a trackpad or a mouse, you can also just grab these corners here with your fingers on the left side, like this, or here on the right side, and they can just resize it easily just like that. And now I can open any app, let me just drag the weather app here to my stage over here, like this. And if you look very carefully, Word moved automatically to the side. So that's how window behavior works on iPadOS. Let me just demonstrate you by opening even more apps. Let me just show you here, if I open music, for example, and I would resize it to a small window like this. So currently here, it's on top of the weather app. If I need the weather app, I can just tap here. And if I would do, in a normal behavior, this here would be behind the window, and I wouldn't be able to see my music app anymore. But in this case, if I would tap here on weather, as you can see, music is just sticking out a little bit over here. So I can still reach music whenever I want to by just tapping on the music app. If I tap on Word, music moves down here. So I can tap here to reach my music. And so everything happens automatically. This window behavior, window management happens automatically. So now I have four apps all running at the same time. I have weather, I have Word, music, and YouTube. And good to know is that all four of them are running actively. So that not one of them is in the background. No, all of them are in the foreground, which means that I can just type here in Word, hello everyone like this, and then I can still scroll here if I want on, on YouTube, while my cursor is still flickering over there, I can always go back here, I can scroll through my weather app over here, and I can even change my music, or, by, or scroll through my playlist over here. And so I can do all of this all whenever I want at the same time. Now Apple calls this window mode feature stage manager, because it's important to note that these, this is actually just one stage. A stage is kind of equal to spaces on desktops. So this here is one space where I have these four apps open. And I can open a second space, of, let's say for example with Twitter open. Let me just tap here on Twitter. Instead of dragging Twitter to my screen, I can just tap on Twitter. And that creates, let me just show you, that creates a second space. So my first space with Word, YouTube and Music and Weather is all now grouped over there. And I can switch between spaces by just tapping on these spaces. Tap, and I'm switched back here. If I go back to YouTube, so now Twitter here is in the background, that is not active. I can, I can switch now to Twitter, 
and just like that, it's there now. Now in the current build of this beta, you can open maximum four apps here on your external monitor and also four apps on your iPad at the same time, which means you can run eight active apps at the same time on both iPad and your external monitor. That is absolutely powerful and really that is a huge difference compared to before. That is just a huge update and I really like the fact that you can open so many apps at the same time now. As you can see here, I moved my windows a little bit and the dock disappeared. So how do I get the dock to reappear? Well, I can just move my cursor here to the bottom and here's my dock. So you can still use this, it just automatically disappeared again to keep all your windows very visible. Now it is also possible to change the behavior of stage manager. So for example here, if you go to settings and then to home screen and multitasking, you have stage manager and you can change the appearance of your dock and recent. So for example, right now I have my external monitor, my external display is connected and I can decide to automatically hide the dock when opening certain windows. Same thing goes with the recents over here. I can also turn it off by just tapping and I can even just remove them both if I would like to. Instead of going all the way to settings, you can also go to control center, long press on stage manager, and then turn on or turn off the part that you don't want. Currently in the current beta, this is only for the iPad, not for the external monitor. Okay, now let's get to gestures and shortcuts. Now to move windows, you don't need to really hit these three dots. You can just use any top bar here. You can just imagine this is a invisible top bar. You can just grab it anywhere here and just start moving it. So it isn't really, I mean, it's very easy to just move windows around just like intuitively you would do with any window on a desktop PC. Let's say you have multiple stages. Like for example here, I have music and I have a second stage there with four other apps. I can switch between both by using my three finger gesture on my trackpad. So just swipe like this and now it's here. I can swipe again and now we're back to the other stage. Now on iPad, I can also use globe and then one of these arrow keys. So for example, globe left, globe right, I can switch between several spaces just like this. Now by using the shortcut globe followed by greater than or less than, you can switch between windows here on in the same stage, so like this. So that's how easy, this is very useful. Uh, so it's really easy to switch between, between windows just like that by using this key combination. Now it's also possible to interact between your iPad and your external monitor. So for example, I mean, let me just take an image over here. This is an image of my iPhone 4 that I uh, made a video of a few, two years ago now. As you might already know, on iOS 16 and iPadOS 16, you can grab subjects of pictures and place them somewhere else. So I can also just grab my iPad and my hand. I can just drag it like this to my screen and just let it go. And now here, it's on my in my Word documents just like this. Now to close the window, you can use the three dots and tap close, or you can use Command W. That's possible as well. So just use Command W like this, and now it's gone. Now I think it's very clear that I really enjoy these features. For me, these are really game-changing features for the iPad in iPadOS 16. I'm really glad that they're here. Now I just want to mention again that this is all currently in beta. If ever there's some changes, I will mention them in future videos and also in a pinned comment in the comment section. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.